Hi, I'm Asif and this screencast is about using dot .files on Gitpod. So what you can do with dot .files? Well, you can use dot .files to customize your Gitpod development environments and to bring a personal touch to each one of them. To make more sense of that, let's also take a look at some of the use cases. So here I have listed some of the use cases but I'll be going into the detail of them right now, also later in the video. So yeah, that was the intro and now let's get into the actual setup so see you there to get started i will now create a new repository if you already have a dot files repository you can skip this part but just to demonstrate i'll create my dot files repository and obviously i'll call it dot files and then i'll leave it as public then create repository after the repository is created I can simply open the Gitpod workspace by clicking on this Gitpod button. Now, if you don't have this button, it's actually coming from um, Gitpod browser extension that I have here, as you see. So you can search in Google to install this. Um, so I'll just simply click on the Gitpod button and it should open up a new workspace for me. The workspace has started and we can continue our setup. Now there are two different ways one of them is slightly simpler and the other one is kind of involving so let's look into the simple one first for example if i want to put a file called .jshrc under the home directory i can simply create that file here inside my .files repository and this is actually the configuration file of jshell if you're familiar to make this file a bit more realistic, I'll configure a simple alias and create a dummy environment variable. So I'll alias c to cd and maybe export something like, I'll call it my username, I guess. Yep, so that looks good. Now to test it out, if it works, what I can do is come to my terminal and I'll run git at dot jshrc and then I'll commit the file I'll give the commit message to init there you go and I'll push the chains and there you go it just pushed to my dot files repository now I'll, I'll open this repository of mine again it was already open there you go now I'll just copy my dot files repository URL and Go to Gitpod IO preferences in here. I'll scroll down and put my dot files link as the repository URL and then save the changes. So after it's saved, I'll close this tab. I'll be back to my dot files repository. I'll try to refresh it because I just pushed a commit. And as you can see, I have the file inside my dot files repository. So now I'll go to gitpod.io and then create a new workspace. You can select any repository that you see here. I'll select the first one. All you need is a new workspace to test it out. I am inside the new workspace now. I'll go to the home directory using cd command and then list all the files using ls-la. So as you can see, it says .jdshrc was sim linked from this path. It was actually installed. If I check its contents, it also reports the contents that I originally committed in my previous workspace. As you can see, this was my .files repository and I had created this workspace from that. I'll go back to the new rep workspace. Now I'll just simply close this from here or just close the tab anyway um, so I'm back to my original workspace where I can make more changes and repeat the process but I'll show you a little trick that you can use for now to directly test out these dot files inside your existing workspace so the trick is to use docker to simulate a fake workspace inside this existing workspace now it might sound a bit tricky but let me show you. I'll get a command snippet from our documentation. 
so I'll go to the dot files docs and this is the link of the documentation for dot files um, and don't worry I'll share all of these links in a pinned comment or in the video description so you can always refer from there and if you scroll down on this page you'll find this FAQ you can read this up a bit so basically what I'll do is copy this code and then come back to my original workspace and while I am in the um, dot files repository so if I run pwd you can see I am in here and this is actually the repository root and I can run the command snippet that I just copied I'll paste it here and there you go I just paste it and I'll hit enter so what it will do is build out the docker container also it will it will also share a bunch of other things from this host workspace to you know simulate that take workspace which I was talking about so I first forwarded a bit in there it can take a while initially but then it will be faster afterwards so as you see it actually ran the docker container and also installed my dot files in it I'm already in the home directory within the docker container so I'll run pwd to confirm as you see I really am inside the home directory and I'll run ls-la to list all the files and there you go the same thing but without creating any workspace every time and without having to commit or push for testing so there you go now as it was saying run exit command to leave debug workspace so if I run exit I'll be back to the original workspace shell now I can run the same command again by pressing the up arrow key on my keyboard and it will show up in my terminal if I hit enter again you see it just happened instantly almost you know it didn't take few minutes like last time because everything was cached um, and it didn't have to pull the image either so that's why it was faster this time now I can actually do whatever I like for example I can install um, apt install cause and it will get installed within the docker container but if I exit the debug workspace or you can say the docker container and run pause in my original shell it's not there because the, the this part of the shell wasn't connected with the original workspace here now let's get a bit advanced and just to see what happens I'll create a new dummy file um, name it hello.txt um, and I'll put something random hello world there you go so I'll run the docker command again from my terminal and see if it works so there you go it just started and I'm in the home directory so I can run ls la um, and there you go there is my hello.txt and I can do cat.hello and it does say hello world and now if I exit the docker container and check in my original workspace file system you will see it's actually not there so there is no hello or dot jdh in the original workspace file system home directory um, yeah so I hope that makes sense now this was the simple method if you want more control over how your dot files is installed you will want to provide a custom installation script you can refer to the documentation again um, I'll share the link as I said earlier in the description so these are the files or these are the file names that you can use to uh, identify a installation script in your dot files repository so I'll just go with install a chase. So as the first thing I'll specify a shebang and I'll use a traditional one. And yeah, that looks okay. Now I can try out something simple. Yep. 
I'll save it. Uh, let's check it in the terminal. I'll run the docker command again. Oh, and by the way, if it feels a bit weird to go back in your shell history to find this command, what you can do is I'll create a new file. I'll call it debug hs and I will paste the command here. So here's the command that I pasted. Now I can come back to the terminal. I'll clear the terminal and then I'll run bash debug hs and that should do without having to write down this whole command uh, over again and again. So this should be much more simple to follow I guess. And you see the docker container already started. It was pretty simple. So it looks like this didn't work. Interesting. Um, I'll see. Okay. Install HS was. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake actually. So I'll exit the Docker container. I'll have to set this as an executable. So I'll do chase mode plus x install HS. And that should do it. Now I'll run the command which I pasted here. The peak docker command using bash debug.hs and there you go. This is from the installation script. I put this echo command in my installations and there you have the output. Let's do something more meaningful from our installations than just a fun echo command. And by the way, you can press Ctrl D to exit the docker container instead of typing exit by yourself. It's a quick shortcut. So instead of running exit like this, I can actually press Ctrl D and that will also do the same thing. So I'll be back to the install script and I'll install something, I'll install a tool that I use often. So one of the tools that I use is called GAs. It's the CLI interface for GitHub, if you know. And GAs is actually available in the Nix package manager. So I'll create a new tab and search in the Nix source packages. And there you have it. I will actually go to the Nixinf and copy the non Nix OS command um, and actually run it here. So I'll run the Docker container again to test out. And oh, that's interesting. No Nixin. Hmm. Okay, I guess I know why this is happening. So I'll have to actually load the environment for Nix profile using such a command. Um, yep, that should do it. Okay, um, I'll set that up and exit and run the docker container again. So there you go. It actually worked this time. So now let's see if GAC is there. Yep, I'll expand my terminal. There you have it, GAC. Okay, that looks good. I also want to install a few other tools such as the gcloud CLI. Fortunately, gcloud CLI is also packaged for Nix, so I can simply install from Nix, which is great when you think about it. So here's the thing, and here's how it looks. I'll just simply copy it. Well, actually, the package name only with the namespace, um, and I'll add it here. And I also want um, if zf and yes. Well, I'll actually make it a bit pretty so you can also do that if you want and um, so yeah just to show you um, this is kind of an example just to give you an idea what it's like when you process a bunch of heavy commands in your dot files installation script to see how long it takes and what are the cons of having a heavy installation script I'll go into that a bit later so I'll also add a time command so I know how long it took for this whole command to complete. Now I'll uh, test out through the docker container. Um, I'll run bash debug.hs once again. 
and there you have Nix installing all that stuff and I'm sure it's going to take a while since it's a good number of packages that I'm installing here so yeah it took 12 seconds about 12 seconds and the thing is when you when you will start using this dot files in a real workspace it will block the launch of your IDE until your dot files installation script has completed or exited so that means if your dot files installation script takes longer maybe over a minute you'll have to wait for a minute before you can start start coding so that could be a problem so what we can do is we can launch this launch this command in the background that will allow the script to exit early and so it will be installed in parallel in the background and you will be able to code or land in your ID earlier. So I'll do this. I'll add ampersand disown and all of it is actually valid bash. You can look this up on Google. So now if I um, exit and run command again, you'll see it's actually happening in the background, but I can still use the shell. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird here because we are testing from a Docker container. It would be different when when you use in a real workspace. So yeah, it, it was it was happening in parallel, and I was still able to use my shell as you can see here. So I'll just exit this. Um, yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of a few things. And you can also use other package managers such as apt or brew and I would also suggest to not use Nix and brew wherever possible because they have to work systemlessly that means they'll have to bring in their own version of the system dependencies which can take time whereas apt is very integrated into the Ubuntu system and already has lots of dependencies installed so it will be reasonably faster in terms of installing a package so yeah try to use apt wherever you can so for example to install packages with apt i would do sudo apt install dash yq and then name my packages i could install cause sl and maybe tmax for example and this dash yq is used for installing in non-interactive mode which is useful when you want to install from dot files because we won't be able to accept prompts um, and that means a app would be just stuck <laughs> in the process so that's not something we want and I would also want to make sure that the app database is up to date uh, because sometimes if it's not installation can fail and there you go another thing I could do is group both of these commands together and then start them in a sub process or in other words use parallelization to speed things up and there you go and by the way I would suggest to not use parallelization for simple commands uh, it only makes sense for long running commands or time consuming commands such as compiling something or installing packages like this or even downloading something for example so yeah um, you, we can now test this out so I'll just run bash debug chase and there you can see both nix and apt is running at the same time which is really fast <laughs> so I guess apt is already done installing tmax cause and nix is also done at the same time which is pretty cool so let's see if cause was actually installed yep there you have it i'll close this now there is one more problem tools like gas and gcloud cli require you to log in or in other words you will need to set up authentication for them so that is also something we need to automate through our script so that we don't have to manually log in into 
these tools every time we start a new workspace so let's look into js at first i'll run the docker container to use js from there and see what i need to do and i press enter to print out the shell prompt for example if i try to do something with js like js repo create and as you see it's telling me to log in into the github cli so this is the command it's suggesting and it's also suggesting that we can set a environment variable called gs token with a github authentication token as the value to automatically log in yeah so that's what we're going to do as the first method so if i look into the help message of gs auth login we, we can see that it's printing out a lot of useful information and it also mentioned the same thing about js token here so basically solutions or tutorials or documentation that works for setting up authentication for a particular tool inside docker containers or github actions will also work for dot files on gitpod so yeah that's a thing to keep in mind and i can create a js token environment variable so i'll go to github settings tokens and new um yeah and i'll create a new job token and expiration you can set a custom expiration for a long period but 30 days for now since i'm just demonstrating and i'll also need repo and read organization toggled on so now i'll create or generate the token i will now copy the token and then create an environment variable in git pod io variables so now i can create a new variable and name it gs token and enter the value of the token and i'll set the scope to any workspace and then i'll add the variable now i'll go back to my original workspace and test it out if it works so i'll start the docker container using bash debug chase now i can check if gs was logged in and to check the login status i can use gs auth and then status and yep logged into github.com as my username through gs token so yeah it did detect my gs token and it seems to be working so that's one really simple method I'd say and there can be two or three more methods although they are not arguably as simple as this one. So let's also look into some of them. I'll show you another method now. So let's look into GA's auth login help and I'll maximize my terminal. You can see GA's auth login command also accepts some additional tags and one of them is with token which is read token from standard input. That means I can pass on my token from the command line or in other words standard input to login into the github CLI. And now this can be particularly helpful in case the tool that you are trying to log in into doesn't recognize a default variable like github does so github recognizes this gs token default variable if that's available but some tools might not so to try this out i'll exit the docker container and then go to the gitpod variable space and i will actually rename this to something random maybe my token so that GitHub CLI doesn't use it anymore automatically. So there you go. And I'll come back to my workspace. In here, I will pass on the variable as a token to the GitHub CLI. So since I am installing GAs from Nix in this line of command, and I am also starting it in the background, so I'll have to also run the GS CLI command within this shell to do so. I'll actually remove this time command it's not necessary anymore i'll group this command also like the below one 
and there goes the second parenthesis and in here below nixon within the group so now i'll do echo my token and then pipe yes auth login with token so that should also work and by the way i'll also have to move the disown ampersand disown command to the end of the group just like the below group i have here so that this command finishes and then it reaches here otherwise it would be spawned in the background and this one will try to execute first which will not work obviously so now i'll test this out i'll clear my terminal and now i'll check if it works and there you have it says what token so it no longer talks about the gh token environment variable that i tried earlier so yeah this is also another possible solution to this problem so you could apply the same thing to many other tools out there usually this is the pattern you'll see and another method could be for example i can also do the same thing for docker so if we look at the docker login command docker login dash dash help you'll see it also has a bunch of flags or options so we can pass on the password or token from the standard input that means you could do something like echo your token and then docker login password um, and that should also work and this means you'll have to create a variable called your token in your user settings and then get the token from docker hub so you can create a token in docker hub and paste it here and also set a scope to your preference I would normally set this because docker is installed by default in all of the workspaces and that's also why I didn't put it within this group now another thing that you can do is to store the file where your login is saved so for example in case of docker if I do docker login and simply enter my login details so I'll enter my username and password in case of docker your password could also mean the token so it's also telling me that it saved the login details in this configuration file however some of the tools will likely not do this so you can also find their files using the find command so what i'll do is find home and name i'll use docker with a wildcard and i'll hit enter now there you go it actually listed me a bunch of things now some of them aren't really the one we are looking for we are looking for this so it's home slash git port slash dot docker and the other ones are just unrelated files that we don't need so i'll go to docker so this is basically home shortcut for home and if i list the files you can see here's the configuration file and my login details was saved to this file so if i look what's in it you can see these are the contents so now i will encode this file in base64 to do so i'll run this command and then pipe it to xarx to format it and there you have it so it's actually base64 dash w0 and then the file name which is config.json then i'm also passing it to xrx so i'll basically copy this whole encoded string and then go to my user settings variable space on gitport and then create a new variable i'll call it docker encoded config i'll paste the encoded string as the value i'll also set the scope to this and add variable after this i will come back to my original workspace and now to restore 
this config json file at this path so it's located in this directory we'll have to create this directory first and i'll basically get rid of this line because we're not using that anymore so i'll create this directory as the first thing so i'll do mkdir dash p and home docker so home is actually equal to this if i show you echo home you see so after that's done now i will copy the variable name from here this one that i just created a while back and then i will decode it back to its original place and then pipe to base 64 dash d and to the original path which is home docker config json so let's see if that works i'll exit the docker container and then i'll run the container again now let's see if that worked i'll go to cd home docker and i'll do ls and there you go the file is there if i check its contents you see that it was restored as it was so that's another way and i guess that's enough for this particular problem now let's move on to shell customization let's also do a bit of refactoring for our script as you saw that it was producing a lot of log output more importantly from the package installations so i will actually redirect the logs for package installation to a file so that our terminal output is a bit more readable so here's what i'm going to do and i'll also do the same thing for this other package installation command so i will be redirecting the whole group outputs to this file and that should do it now let's check out how that looks like yep as you can see it's a much more clean terminal we have here but of course the commands are obviously running in the background as you can see my cpu was also pretty high just a while ago and it's slowing down we can also check the logs by using such a command so it's this dash fxr and then the file path of our log so if i press enter i'll get this and i can scroll up and down using the arrow keys on my keyboard and you can press q to exit from the log pager so i'll exit from the docker container as well now as the one last example i'll show you how to set up zsh with omz and power level 10k so to set zsh as your default shell or git port here's what you do you go to the environment variable space from your user settings and create a new variable so the variable name is shell and then you enter zsh and set the scope to this and then click on add variables so there you go it was created i'll go back to my workspace now what we need is to install omz let's look up the documentation for omz so here's the github page if i scroll down a bit and basic installation so it's getting the script from a directory called tools and then installations well we can directly use this command because it has some features that we don't want when configuring from a installation script like ours so i'll go to the tools directory on this repository then check the installation script 
so as you can see it also accepts a few additional options and we are mainly interested in these two options so I will basically copy this command and then go to my workspace paste it here and I will also use this option to keep the existing configuration and that should do it and to set up power level 10k here's what we're going to do I'm going to search for power level 10k and check out the github page from here let's see the installation and manual I'll actually go with the manual on because it seems more straightforward to me so there you go now I will upload my custom ZSHRC and the power level 10 configuration file I actually copied them to my desktop so I'll upload them here from my desktop so here's what I'm going to do I'll select them and then bring up the browser window and drop them here I'll replace the existing ZSHRC that I had so there you go now if I test it out to see if it works okay it looks like both of OMZ and power level 10k was installed but if you noticed my dot files were no longer being installed since I introduced a custom installation script so if I do less la you'll see none of my dot .jhsrs or even the hello txt is here they were supposed to be symlinked under the home directory but they are missing although if I check in my dot .files directory where my dot .files are cloned you can see that those files are present but they were not installed as symlinks there are tools that you can use to install your dot .files as symlinks from your custom installation script but we are not going to need that since it's pretty simple to do from bash itself so if you come back to the dot .files documentation on our gitpod docs and look onto this FAQ um, that says how to install symlinks from dot .files so I'll basically copy this snippet and follow these instructions and I'll exit the docker container and create a new folder called home files and then I'll move my dot files in there so I'll move them inside this folder after they're moved I will now paste the snippet here and you can actually name the folder to something else if you want but then you will also have to adjust it here um, I'll just use the default now let's test this out and see what happens so yeah as you can see it tells me installing dot file symlink all my three files now if I run jhs I have both power level 10k and as well as oh my jhs so yeah it's pretty cool now let's commit all of our changes and push to our dot files repository to finally test it out in a real workspace so I'll exit from the debug docker container I'll commit now I can push I'll open the link from here again as you can see all of my changes were pushed I'll close this tab and now to test it out I will create a new workspace so I'll go back to the gitpod dashboard 
and now new workspace oh and by the way here's a shortcut instead of doing that you can also try gitpod.new that will actually get yourself a completely empty gitpod workspace and it's a convenient shortcut so might be helpful the new workspace has started and to verify my dot files installation i'll check the dot files log as the first thing i'll use this command to view the dot files log and as you can see there are no errors so that's a good sign and press q to exit i'll also check if some of my tools or packages got installed so i'll see if gs is here yep GA seems to be here so assume other ones were installed as well I'll also see if it was logged in properly and yep it seems to be logged in so I think everything else also went out just fine and with that I can simply close this workspace that means our dot files installation script actually works which is great Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, you can find me at kitpod.io slash chat where I hang out with the community. So, see you there. Bye bye.